Hey guys, and welcome back to another fun-filled edition of Low Altitude. I'm your host, Elo. On today's edition, I'm going to be talking to you guys about something, a question, really, I've gotten over the years. I'm not really entirely sure why. Probably because I'm kind of a nerd and, you know, secretly encourage people to have technical debates in the comments section on Instagram. It, anyway, it's not important. But at one point, I had sort of suggested, hey, we live in 2019, 2020, you know, we have smartphones, cell phones, internet, broadband. And my buddy in San Diego has Google Fiber. It's like one gigabit connection to his laptop. My cell phone has more data transmission capability than the air traffic control system. The encryption on WhatsApp is far more secure than anything related to the civil air traffic control system. So the question that occasionally comes up is simply, why does air traffic control around the globe still use amplitude modulation, or AM, for their radio technology? So if you guys follow low altitude or you listen to my podcast, Aviation Lowdown, you know, you know I have a weird sense of humor. But with that all said, this question is actually really, really fascinating. To understand what this even is asking, you have to basically know what radio is, not in the real technical sense, but what it truly is trying to do. Basically, we're trying to take information, whether that's voice communication, whether that's video in the case of like TV transmission, uh, whether that's telemetry data, which is location-based things. It doesn't matter what we're trying to send, but we're trying to send some level of data through the air, radio waves. Now, if you guys paid attention in high school, which was something I didn't really do very well, but if you did, you may be familiar with the fact that radio waves are electromagnetic energy that's going through the air. And this energy is pulsing through the air at a certain frequency, which can be defined by its wavelength, which is how long the wave is, and also by its, well, its frequency, which is how many times it's cycling per second. This is usually defined in hertz, which is cycles per second. By the way, for those of you nerds out there who deal with computing, it's the same exact unit of measurement, the megahertz or the gigahertz. In that case, you're talking about processor cycle speed. Here we're talking about the wave cycle. Anyway, that's all real nerdy that nobody really cares about, but we want to talk about why does ATC use AM? So we understand there's a frequency involved with radio waves. The frequency basically is defining what station you're on. It's the tuning frequency, the channel. But the real question is how do we get the information onto that wave? How do we essentially encode it onto the wave that's going to be sent through the air electromagnetically? Well, the answer is you modulate it. Modulation is just a really fancy term for change. You're basically implementing some level of change onto the wave. For those music nerds out there, you actually may recall that key changes are technically called modulations. With radio, same thing. But how do you modulate a signal? How do I get my voice onto a wave? Now the wave that we're going to be modulating this voice information onto is defined by what is called the carrier frequency. This can get a little confusing, but just think of the carrier frequency as being the backbone wave frequency that we're using. So if I tune my radio to 121.5 megahertz, the guard frequency, of course, you're, you're telling your radio to listen to the carrier wave of 121.5 megahertz. Now, if we don't modulate anything onto this, it's just a blank wave, in a sense. But for those that actually paid attention in high school, you may recall that waves can be defined by things like frequency, period, and amplitude. Amplitude is essentially the input power of the wave, how high it goes. Uh, of course, you, you wouldn't go to La Jolla and say, holy shit, man, the amplitudes of those waves are huge. But basically, <laughs> that's what you're saying when you're getting 15-foot swells. The amplitude of the wave is big. Amplitude modulation, therefore, is when you take an input, say a voice signal like the one I'm talking to you now, and you modulate it onto the wave. And we're modulating, in the case of AM radio, amplitude modulation. You are modulating or changing the amplitude of the carrier wave. In fact, that's actually given a bandwidth. When you input the information, the wave is swelling, and not swelling, depending on your voice. And that's basically how AM radio amplitude modulation works. Of course, you may have also heard of FM, which is frequency modulation. In this case, you're still modulating a signal onto the wave. That's how it's sending information, but you're no longer modulating amplitude. What do you think you're modulating? Frequency, right. So the frequency 
is slightly changing, not the amplitude. Well, holy shit, if you're still with me and you understand the basics behind amplitude modulation and frequency modulation, well, we kind of go back to our beginning question. Why does air traffic control use AM? Well, the first and perhaps most obvious answer is simply the fact that back in the day, when radio was being implemented into air traffic control, it was basically what they had. They didn't really have FM radio, and if they did in the years that came later, it was way too clunky and expensive, and it wasn't really reliable. So right off the bat, you're like, well, let's just use AM. But for the more technically correct answer, and for perhaps the reason why you clicked on this video, it actually has to do with the fact that AM radio uses less bandwidth. You actually may recall you're in your car and you tune to AM radio, and it's got this distinctive sound to it. It's got like almost a blurry sound. For those music nerds, audio nerds, you'll recall that the top and the low frequencies of the audio are kind of cut out. All you're getting is kind of that muffly sound. It's using less bandwidth. It's not occupying as much sonic and RF space. So right off the bat, FM, well, it sounds better. For those of you out there who like music, you'll probably prefer listening to FM versus AM. But in air traffic control, we're not listening to music. Well, unless you're one of those assholes that plays Danger Zone on the guard frequency. But what we do care about is available frequencies. You don't want to run out of frequencies. So AM radio, because it uses less bandwidth, you can cram more frequencies into a given band. Well, that's super helpful because it allows us to have more simultaneous conversations going on on neighboring frequencies. Really important. But perhaps most important, and the biggest reason why AM radio is used in airplanes, is because it sounds really cool. No, I'm, I'm kidding. That's completely not right. The main reason why it's used is because of what is known as the capture effect. What the hell is the capture effect? Everybody in aviation has experienced something related to what is known as the capture effect. By the way, it has nothing to do with being catfished on Tinder, although it kind of, the capture effect kind of sounds like it should. If you have two pilots on the ground, they're on the same frequency. Make it up, whatever frequency you want. Both pilots key up the radio. It's gonna sound like crap. But something very interesting is also going to happen to those listening. Many will actually hear some parts of both transmissions. In other words, you're both on the ground, you're both keying up the mic, but you kind of bleed into everybody's receiver. You're both heard. Albeit, it sounds like crap, but you're both getting through. A better way of saying this is that more than one station can transmit on the same frequency in AM and still be heard. In FM, this is impossible. To understand why this is, you have to kind of understand what FM is. Of course, it's frequency modulation. So again, recall that modulation is the changing of the frequency in the case of FM. If you're changing the frequency with more than one input, two guys keying up or two gals keying up, good luck. You're not going to hear more than one. And in fact, you probably won't hear anything because it'll be like, you know, terrible sound. I used to build these kits, I had like uh, soldering scars all over my hands. My parents would absolutely kill me. I would hook up like a 400 watt linear amplifier and the thing was not grounded and So that is super helpful. The fact that yes, although it may sound like crap, the audio from more than one transmitting station or aircraft can actually get through to the receivers or it could be air traffic control or it could be somebody on guard frequency looking to, uh, you know, input the next Top Gun reference. The bottom line is AM radio is old, it's clunky, it doesn't really sound the best, but it works, and it works incredibly well. I don't think it's going to go anywhere anytime soon. For those interested in more, I'm actually going to be doing a video on HF radio, which is something that many people probably don't even think about. Uh, for those who are in the oceanic environment, you may be familiar with HF or high frequency. HF is super unusual because it's actually subject to what is called ionospheric propagation. That is a fucking mouthful. The atmosphere, essentially, can bend and refract and distort radio waves. This sometimes can result in really wacky stuff, but nevertheless, really interesting. So to summarize, AM radio is used in aviation predominantly because it sounds the coolest. <laughs> also, it was used from the beginning, it occupies less bandwidth, and perhaps most importantly, it's not subject to the infamous capture effect. So there you have it. Next time somebody whips out their smartphone and goes on Snapchat and sends you some crazy video of their four-flight flight plan or 
sends a picture of the ramper playing drums with his wands, and they think to themselves and to you, man, I wish the pilots had this kind of telecommunications technology on the flight deck. Well, now you can remind them with your infinite knowledge of AM radio technology. Pfft, dude, get out of here. Keep your Snapchat in your pocket. When it comes to ATC and aviation, <laughs> it's AM radio, baby. I'm your host, L.O. Thanks for joining me on this week's edition of Low Altitude. If you guys like this video, please like, share, subscribe, leave me a comment, send me some love, fan mail, hate mail, everything in between, LO at aviationlowdown.com, and of course, follow me on Instagram, LO Altitude. As always, guys, fly high, fly safe, and, uh, well, don't do anything I wouldn't do. Take it easy, guys. Bye-bye.